What's going on in the Shine On show? I continuously have questions about the capability of the main character. What can he do to not have to do the worst thing possible when it comes down to his younger brother? And the ultimate thing that comes out of this for me is how in the heck does this guy not hate the person that killed his mother and father? And the only thing we know is he has some type of truth. So let's get into it. This week's episode is quite fulfilling when it comes down to me learning more about this dissecting doctor and this really interesting soul-believing priest who not only does he believe in it, he seems to be very close to the afterlife or can be relatively, uh, I guess you could say, relied on by the dead, because they just show up and point a finger at where the true house is at, (sighs) and it makes a lot of sense for whatever souls, I guess, that are hurt or, you know, destroyed by these weapons, they would be the first ones to be able to kind of give you a location on where they are slash what other souls are being taken, I guess, if they don't get fully possessed and put inside of a sword, which I really do hope they go into detail, like what makes a dark sword, what makes the swords that we're seeing uh, with the main characters, Um, because as of right now, it feels like the dark swords are more like the dark malice of like human nature. But at the end of the day, if there's someone here uh, who could be a dark malice sword and he was a loving father to his daughter, uh, so much to the point when he started feeling some type of way, he sent a letter out to make sure she would have a safe you know, journey and that she would be with people that would actually care for her. Um, why would someone like him have, you know, malice in his heart before that? Or if that doesn't even need to be the case, and they manipulate whatever it is they're taking away from the kill. I'm not entirely sure, but what I can tell you is this show has been continuously ramping up the information of the dark side and giving us a better look at just why uh, it's going to be hard for the main character to fight his brother, who seemingly is getting complimented by the most killer person in our team who um, who says that the younger brother is like someone who has been killing like continuously. He's demonish. Um, a lot of compliments from an assassin, but if it was said by anyone else, it's not a compliment. It's just like, I think he's a killer. I think he's this, I think he's that. But for... Um, you know, for the brother who's doing these things, that's a compliment, you know, he's already being uh, weighed up against someone who's a hitman who kills and can tell that if the fights go on and that other guy hesitates, he's more or less not only going to get himself killed, but others killed who try to protect him, so it's kind of getting a little bit more to the point of why certain characters have already been so targeted um like the guy who's missing an eye and stuff like that or you know why is it that these swords of those people when they fell did not end up in black blades they ended up in their own blades that they used in that battle which they're practically unique in that sense because we know no one else of having this type of blade slash will to fight against that darkness We see that darkness can cut through practically anything but these swords that our characters are using. So, super interested to see what y'all are thinking about this week's episode. Uh, Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything I didn't talk about that you would like to talk about. Or if there is um, anything else y'all are watching that I'm not talking about and, and I would love to pick it up or check it out. 
uh, or maybe already checked it out and you can see it on the channel but yeah thank you all so much for the support i will definitely talk to you on the next one take care and peace